The Microsoft Surface Duo. It's been a while since Microsoft has released a cell phone. Four years, actually. So it's nice to see them come back swinging with a dual screen folding tablet of a smartphone. Today, we're going to durability test the Surface Duo right alongside the Slim Pin. This video is sponsored by Audible. Let's get started. The Surface Duo costs about $1,400, and before we get too mad at that massive price, it's really kind of justified since it's like two regular phones stuck together. Two screens, two batteries, so I won't make fun of the price too much. The bumper case, however, does deserve whatever jokes come its way. It's included in the box right alongside the 18 watt fast charger. And don't get me wrong, it was nice of Microsoft to include some protection. As you can tell, this phone is unlike anything else we've ever seen, with a full complete 360 degree hinge that can close like a book or open up and have the screen on the front and back. So designing an effective, physically protective case for this contraption would be super complex. I would have liked to attend the meeting though where someone suggested just taping rubber strips to the side. I mean, yeah, it'll probably be effective and definitely better than nothing. I just didn't see that one coming. Who knows how long it'll actually stick to the side of the phone for though, which makes this durability test all the more important. The Duo is shorter than my Note 10 Plus and also a bit wider and incredibly thin. When folded shut, it's still just about as thick as my phone is inside of a case. Opened up though, it feels more like an e-reader with glass on the front and the back. It does feel heavier than it looks and I honestly kind of like it. The Duo is running Android and acts just like any other Android phone would, except for all this extra screen real estate. You can have Twitter open on one half of the phone and Instagram open on the other, so it's easier to watch society collapse in real time. Before we start the scratch test, let's break open Microsoft Stylus. Now this slim pin is sold separately, but does work on the Surface Duo, and costs a little over $100. It's got his own exterior charging station, not quite as streamlined as Apple's Apple Pencil, or the Samsung S Pen inside of the notes, but to be fair, the slim pin also doesn't snap in half quite as easy as the others do. This guy is a tank. I'll start slicing through both plastic sides of the pin and take a quick break to analyze the clicky bit up at the top. Then all the plastics can be removed to reveal a long internal metal housing with two magnets built into the sides. The magnets allow itself to perch on the side of the duo. I'm not sure if that's on purpose or not. It doesn't seem like it would end up staying there very long. I'll remove the two screws and open up the metal sheath, and we get our first look at quite possibly the cutest battery we've ever seen. This little cylinder is a 15 mAh capacity cell made by Panasonic. It takes about 90 minutes to charge and operates the pin for about 14 hours. Kind of fun. Now let's get into the scratch test. The Duo has dual 5.6 inch displays, which fold open to reveal an 8.1 inch screen overall. With the hinge and bezel in the middle though, it's more like a second monitor than an extended display. I've always used multiple monitors on my desktop computers though, so I do get the appeal. The Microsoft Duo is using Gorilla Glass 5, which means it scratches at a level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7. I'm strangely drawn to this device. Weird phones have always appealed to me. My first phone was a Nokia 6800, with a keyboard on either half of the screen. But cameras are also important to me and this phone only has one. One front facing camera under the front glass. No camera bump or rear cameras, just the one 11 megapixel little guy. There's also only one speaker right here in the earpiece. The grill is secure, but one speaker is just not the same as stereo. So the lack of cameras and lack of stereo speakers will probably be mostly what keeps me from switching to this phone. Also, very strangely for a $1,400 device, the frame is made from plastic as well as the buttons. Not a deal breaker by itself, but the thinness of the halves combined with the plastic frame does make me nervous for the bin test. There is plastic along the top, 
as well as along the bottom next to that USB-C charging port. There is no headphone jack. The Duo does have a SIM card tray, but no expandable memory. There is no IP rating, but there is a little peak feature, which just allows the time and date to pop up along the inside edge. Almost like an always-on display, but on the inside. The Duo feels more elegant than a normal cell phone, almost like a book, more sophisticated. And speaking of sophistication, huge thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. Audible is still giving families with children access to hundreds of titles for free, while this whole pandemic thing is still going on. No ads, no sign up, just one click and you're in. Also, I didn't tell you this, but Audible isn't even checking to see if you're a kid or not to get those free titles. And there's some really good classics in there, like Frankenstein or Call of the Wild. If you've ever wondered, though, if you could swim inside of a nuclear reactor, you might like the audiobook called What If, out of Audible's regular library. It gives scientific answers to hypothetical questions, like what would happen if everyone on Earth jumped up and down at exactly the same time? Makes you kind of curious, huh? Get the What If audiobook for free with a 30-day trial of Audible. Go to audible.com slash jerryrig, or text jerryrig to 500-500, and you too can find out if it's possible to build a jetpack entirely out of downward-firing machine guns. Audible.com slash jerryrig, or text jerryrig to 500-500. And thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. Now, it might also just be my imagination, but I do feel like this Microsoft Duo will regularly just not recognize my finger swipes. The screen would just sit unresponsive when I would swipe across it, or try to open and close apps, and I haven't even been that mean to it yet. Hopefully it's just a minor software issue. Every surface on the Duo is made from glass, which does make it feel high-tech, since heaviness is kind of associated with quality, at least for me. The plastic frame of the phone doesn't draw too much attention to itself. Speaking of the plastic frame though, I did already scratch the fingerprint scanner a bit on my way around with my razor blade. So as I try and set my fingerprint this time, it's having a real struggle getting a good read. But once my fingerprint is finally recognized, it does seem to unlock the phone every single time. The bumper case also has a cutout for the fingerprint sensor. Still a little bit funny that a piece of tape is the only thing holding the case to the phone. As for the burn test, Microsoft is using dual AMOLED displays on either half. And we can verify that by scientifically holding my lighter to the screen for about 12 seconds and watching the display turn white. We still don't quite know why it does this yet, but if we do it enough times, we might find out why. Therefore, science. Now for the bin test. Microsoft has already done half of my job for me. The phone bends incredibly smoothly all the way around. The hinge is super simple and pretty much all exposed. We'll take a closer look at how it works from the inside during the teardown. Since this phone is wider than most, it might not fit comfortably in most front pockets, and people who own it are going to be tempted to put it in their back pocket like a wallet, which means there's a good chance the Duo will get sat on. And if it does get sat on, it's probably going to do something like this, and flex more than any other phone we've seen in recent history. When we open it up though, surprisingly, it still turns on, even though there is a permanent curve to the phone now. The plastic frame is not helping much with the structural integrity, but the metal hinge, however, is holding its own, and carrying the load. Bending it back the other direction, we can see that the phone is flexing quite a bit, but not along the hinge. The hinge mechanism is made from metal, along with the two rods running lengthwise down its spine. If the metal hinge was not there, this phone would definitely be toast. The metal is enough to keep the phone alive. So the Microsoft Surface Duo passes my durability test. I still don't recommend sitting on it, but it's nice to know that the Duo is not super fragile. Overall, I'm impressed. Plop a few more nice cameras on the back and I could very well see myself using version number two. Don't forget to grab your free audiobook from Audible with a link in the description. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks to for watching. I'll see you around.